Legendary investor in Russia, Bill Browder, joins us right now. He's the CEO of Hermitage Capital Management, and he's also the author of the best-selling book, Red Notice. Bill, I want to thank you for being with us today. Great to be here. We, we talk with you every year here, and uh, a lot of times in between, too. We know about uh, your issues with Russia, Russia that go all the way back to 2009 and beyond. Uh, you want to give us an update on, on what's happened since we talked to you last? Well, uh, it's been a very dramatic year in my interaction with Russia. Um, it was discovered in July of last year that... Um, Natalia Veselnitskaya, the famous Russian lawyer working for Putin, um, approached Donald Trump Jr., Paul Manafort, and, and Jared Kushner asking for the Magnitsky Act, which is a piece of legislation that I've been fighting for to impose sanctions on, on uh, Russian officials. She wanted that repealed, and that, that set off a, a whole political firestorm like I'd never seen before. Since that happened, though, in terms of my own uh, campaign, we have gotten now five countries to impose Magnitsky sanctions on Russia, and that includes the United States, Canada, the UK, Lithuania, and Estonia. Putin is, is pretty mad at me now. Uh, I think he probably was before, but probably gains from this. Uh, President Trump was, was one who backed this up, I think, back in April. He gave uh, some additional uh, support to your rulings on these things. So what do you, where do you think we stand just in terms of U.S.-Russia relations at this point? Well, it, it's, it's a bit schizophrenic. So if you, if you read um, Trump's um, Twitter feed, he says nice things about Putin. However, if you look at the Trump administration in terms of their actual policy implementation, um, they are um, as tough or tougher than, than Obama on Russia. They've been implementing Magnitsky sanctions, various other sanctions, and, and things are moving forward. And so, um, uh, you know, I, I watch it like a hawk, and, and so far, if anything, uh, things have gotten worse, not better for, so for Putin. Do you have a take, though, given your own experience, do you have a take on the whole uh, Mueller investigation, the whole, the whole, the whole investigation, what's ha what happened with the election? You know, um, I, I'm not going to be an armchair law enforcement officer. Um, uh, you know, Mueller has got um, 20 of the best U.S. attorneys working for him. He's probably got 200 FBI agents underneath him. He'll come to his conclusion. Either there will be collusion or there won't be collusion. I don't know more than these guys who can do wiretaps, um, you know, surveillance, uh, subpoenas, and other things. He knows a thousand times more than I'll ever know. Uh, you you don't like investing in Russia. I think that goes without saying. But you, you don't like Bitcoin either. What are what are your concerns about Bitcoin? Well, so, so for, I have a, a, a sort of an interesting perspective on Bitcoin. So I, I've effectively devoted my life now to imposing sanctions on on Russian crooks and crooks from around the world through this Magnitsky sanctions program, and Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are a way for uh, bad dictators or criminals to bypass. Um, sanctions. And so from my perspective, and I think from the perspective of, of politicians around the world, um, they're not going to allow that to happen. They will eventually regulate um, all cryptocurrencies in the same way as you can't take out more than $10,000 out of the bank without reporting it to the U.S. government. Um, they're not going to allow uh, uh, for people to take a million dollars worth of Bitcoin and move it from Russia to Switzerland. That's just not going to happen. And so eventually it's going to be regulated. And as it gets regulated, one of the prime uh, aspects of Bitcoin will disappear, which Wait. is this libertarian freedom. We've seen South Korea step in and, and look at potentially regulating. Why do you think other governments have been so slow to announce any measures like that? Um, just because governments tend to be slow at doing everything. Um, it, you know, uh, we, what we've seen over the last 10 years is technologies get ahead of regulation. It's true with Facebook and Twitter and with information. It's true with, with Bitcoin in terms of um, money laundering. Um, they will get to it, and when they get to it, it, it will be extremely tough and devastating what, and, and hurt the share what's price. What's the rationale for it if there's no, if the libertarian freedom part is taken out, then what good is it? You know, people are talking about um, ease of, of transaction, right. lowering transaction expenses and stuff like that. I'd be worried if that, that that's, you know, that's, it, that's no, the selling point you it always becomes, hear. It doesn't become a, it becomes a temporary currency. I mean, you go into something and then out of something, but use it uh, sort of as Can part of Can you still only get other you know, other uh, cryptocurrency that's like you can't really exchange it for dollars? You could. No, you would be able to. I but people, it's just hard with fees and everything else. I guess it's still early. We'll see. Uh, I mean, my, my, my view is, is that there's no, no long-term value for, for these cryptocurrencies because of government regulation. Bill, you... <laughs> <laughs> That's different than worth a million dollars of Bitcoin, Bill. It, it is indeed, yeah. <laughs> worth zero or a million dollars per coin. It's binary. Yeah. <laughs> If you don't like Russia and you don't like Bitcoin, what are some of the areas where, where you do think there's, there's a good place for investment? 
Well, I mean, uh, I, I um, as, as an investor over a 20-year career um, running the Hermitage Fund, I, I invested exclusively in emerging markets, and now I exclusively invest in developed markets, uh, namely the United States and Western Europe. I think the markets are pretty frothy at this point. I think that um, uh, all, a lot of good news is priced in. Um, I, I wouldn't be sort of um, uh, going crazy um, adding on to positions right now, but, but I, I like countries with the rule of law, we're prop, with property rights and with good economic fundamentals, and, and that's where we are with Western Europe and the United States. Do you just feel like you got burned by going into these emerging markets thinking that it was going to be a great place to be, and then all of a sudden rule of law is the thing that matters most? Well, property rights and rule of law are absolutely essential. Basically, if, if you don't have that, then at any point they can take everything away, which is what we've seen happen over and over and over again in Russia and other countries. All right. Well, Bill, we want to thank you very much for being with us today. Always good to see you. Always good to see you. Good to see you. Hey there. Thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.